This is Shaman Weaver Shilly Baker, and I'm here with the amazing Liz Mache. And I have known you through so many transformations. Feels like lifetimes in this lifetime since I first met you. I don't even know, 12 years ago, something like that. And just before you were leaving for Puerto Rico, you gave me this reading. It was like practically hours before you were getting on board for the plane. And then now you're back having had that experience, which I, I'm imagining really deepened your process. And so can you catch me up on what it is that you've been doing since then? You've written a book. It's sitting right here. It's called Gateway to Change 2018 and Beyond. And here we are coming up on 2020. So we're in this book, right? Oh, yes. It's very exciting. It was a, a challenge to write the book because I've never really written anything. So that was really fun because two ladies invited me to join them. And at first I was going to be consulting and giving them some ideas. And then it turned out that I was able to contribute quite a bit to the book. So that was really fun. It's on numerology and astrology. And we're in such exciting times. And yeah, we have known each other about 12 years. And yeah. Seen each other and yeah. So can you tell us what's up in the next little while for us? I mean, what, what kind of signposts can we look for? And how can we use this information to make our lives even better than they already are? Well, right now, yesterday, we just had a new moon in Scorpio. So that's really exciting and digging deep within and getting in touch with our feelings, our emotions, secrets are coming to the surface. So, um, don't have any secrets that you don't want anybody to know because they might just find out what it's all about because Scorpio's energy is really about that. And then on the 31st on Halloween, we have Mercury, our communication planet, going retrograde in Scorpio also. So that'll be a time to redo and re rework a lot of things and gather information and do the research. So that's also when the veil is thinnest between the worlds, right? Oh, so yes. if there's any ancestral stuff that, um, and maybe that's part of the secrets, right? Maybe there was something buried back there that we don't know about that's being brought forward. Because whether you um, consciously know it or unconsciously know it, you know, it's part of what drives you in this life, right? Is carrying out your ancestry lineage and also healing the wounds of those who've gone before us. Yes, that's happening. I know of a gal that found out that she has a brother that she didn't know that she had, which was turned out to be a half brother. And of course, her parents have passed on. So yes, that's like a family secret that came forward. So that's a great example. Yeah. I it? really, really like that. Yeah. Thank and you. I feel like it's really important for us to start writing our desires and our dreams and anything we want to change about ourselves. The last several moons and even this new moon that we had, new moons are always about putting our intentions out there to bring in what we would like to bring into our lives and manifest but even some of the full moons have been about writing things down. Or if you're a painter, you could paint or draw. You could cut out pictures and make a, um, a vision board. But I, I feel it's really, really important to do some writing, even if you did a vision board, to write some words. It's really, really important right now. So I love that because what we're doing is in Fearless AF is I invite them, I get, I prod them, and they do. It's amazing uh, to write out, I am Fearless AF and claim that for themselves. So in, even when I teach the inner visioning and we start looking like you're doing right now, we use this esoteric knowledge to craft our lives. So now we have this opportunity to know what's coming up in the next month so that we can utilize this for ourselves. So what's going on? So we've got this new moon um, that we're still in that energy of, and then we go get to use the full moon. When is that? That's November 12th. And here on the West coast of the United States, it happens at 5.34 AM in the morning. Um, and in that astrological chart, we have Scorpio, at the doorway at the beginning of the chart, we call that the ascendant or the rising sign. So Scorpio is about transformation and bringing things to the surface. So it's kind of, these themes seem to be repeating themselves within all these charts. So it's like so exciting that 
it's kind of like do it do yeah. it <laughs> and wasn't it wasn't that what i walked in the door saying what is up with this old pattern <laughs> So there it is. So I can imagine now that on November 12th, I'm just going to dissolve that, right? Yep. Okay, great. And also maybe take a look at, are you doing your own self-care or are you doing too much for other people? Does that need to be rebalanced? That seems to be a big theme for November. You know, if you're not taking good enough care of yourself, take a little bit better care of yourself. If you're just giving, giving, giving to everybody else, it's like maybe time to say no put up some boundaries so how i see that is um being able to tell someone early in november that no you don't you won't expect me to be at thanksgiving i i'm going to do something else and to actually do that to be brave enough to do that because we have this help that's coming along that if there's things in your life that you've been wanting and you have desires that it seems like november's the month right Yes, yes, exactly. It's really exciting. And, you know, maybe you haven't even been taking care of your relationships. So maybe you're doing really good self-care, but maybe you're not taking care of relationships. So ah. it's a really a balance. You know, we're used to that, oh, we do and do for others. That's, you know, most people are pretty familiar with that. But then some people maybe have been ignoring relationships and it can be intimate relationships, but it can be work relationships. It can be our clients. Ah. But, so it really is a broad spectrum. So that's personally touching and interesting to me because I've crafted and crafted and crafted in isolation for a while now up in the woods. And now I'm ready to come back and I'm out playing and reconnecting with you and some other people. So this is how also you feel the energy ahead of time sometimes, right? Exactly. And you know how the, you said earlier, the veils are thinning. I believe that. And I also feel like that with the veils thinning, it's going to, help direct us if we've taken a detour off of our path or taken a detour in our life, it's going to like open up and shine some light on paths or opportunities for us that maybe we have letting go of like, oh, maybe that's too much work, but maybe it's now it's the time to do that, to get back on the path and do the work. So what that reminds me of is the ability to say, instead of saying, I can't because in all actuality, you probably could if you wanted to, or if you were willing to take the time, the energy, the maybe money or whatever, you could do this thing. So I'm going to ask you to claim for yourself that instead of saying, I can't say, I won't, I won't invest the time in that. I won't invest the money in that. And that that's a really strong declaration, but we have the power and it looks like we're getting the universal push here. Yes. And it's really exciting. So, and that November 12th again is a, the Taurus full moon. Cause I don't know if I mentioned that and it full moons are a time of releasing, but it seems really interesting that the last full moons that we've been having, sometimes there's like a little bit of effort to move us forward, even though the new moons are about building and moving forward, it's the full moons still have some of that energy. Mm. And also on the full moon, it's always good to look back six months because that would have been the new moon in Taurus to see what you wished and desired. So writing things down, and it doesn't have to be 20 pages. It could be one paragraph or 10 words. will give you a clue down the road that you can go back and look at. So the um, thing that comes up for me right now is don't write I want because the universe will bring you more wanting. What you write is I desire or I have this experience. It doesn't have to be true. You can lie to yourself. And so in this, you write down, I desire, and you know, I'm always using that new car thing, but I, and I have no desire for a new car. Let me be clear about that. But it's a really good example for what my dad taught me about new cars that, you know, they dropped value immediately. So now I get to go back and clear that energy because this moon is in, is in Taurus. Isn't that all about the practical world? Yes, it's all about practical things. And I would say to go and look, do you still want what you wanted 10 years ago or five years ago? It could be even as simple as cleaning out a drawer or a closet. 
you know, I've had these clothes in there. I haven't worn them in three or four years. Do I still really need to keep them? You know, maybe take them to the Goodwill, take them to the, you know, the thrift store, pass them to a friend that maybe needs them. Yeah. It's a, it sounds like movement. Yes. A lot of movement. Ah, so on the physical level, what about emotionally? Well, I think we should go now to Mercury retrograde and we'll come back to the emotional level because okay. Mercury goes retrograde on Halloween. So Mercury retrograde is a lot of times a huge influx of information. And most of the time, you know, you put it in your inbox or you'd open your mail and go through it. And then maybe you'd toss out what you don't need. And then you'd read the others maybe that day or that week sometimes. So Mercury is kind of like that. Your mailbox is really full every single day and you need to take time to process it and don't go through it quickly. And that lasts until November 20th, and it's in Scorpio. So tell me again, it starts when? October 31st at 8.42 a.m., so that's Halloween. Okay, and then... And it lasts till November 20th at 11.12 a.m., and again, those are uh, West Coast times of the United States. So that's almost three full weeks. Yes. (laughs) But if you need to do research and development, this is like a wonderful time to do the research. Oh, Okay. Um, it could be a really good time to redo your website. Anything with RE in front of it, redo, rework, rethink. This is the opportune time. Yes, you can buy items, but please research to make sure that that's the item that you want to purchase, especially like cars or the electronics, because you might learn, well, I didn't do my research, so I really wanted the one that was 25 more dollars, but I was in a hurry, so I didn't buy that one. And so then, you know, maybe in a few months, you'll buy the other one. And so now you've spent twice as much money as maybe you wanted to. But it's, you know, really getting in touch with, are we speaking our truth? Are we living our truth? You know, we can be talking to ourselves, but we can be talking to other people. So it's time to dig deep and get brutally honest. Dive deep. Yes. Yep. (laughs) And then our emotional, well, Scorpio is about emotions and really deep emotions. And we have a lot of Scorpio energy right now. So I would say, yes, people could be really emotional, but we also have to remember how our emotions, they can be flowing nicely. They can be overflowing. They can be frozen. They can be steam. So some of our emotions could be anger and passion if it was steamy. If it's frozen, maybe we're holding it within and not letting it out. So when we do that, I believe we're doing damage to ourselves. Yes, sometimes we need to think about it to let it go, but sometimes it's important to let it go. But then That's back to the writing part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is a perfect time for us to write what we want. And also, it seems like a perfect time to write the things that have been troubling us, bothering us, that we don't want and clear that out. So a beautiful way to do that is to write it down, to burn it, and then to bury it. I mean, that really is like, okay, done with that. So any other tips that you've got for us for this upcoming month? Well, go with the flow as much as you can. (laughs) Yes, look at your emotions, but try not to hold on to them. It's like if you need to cry, cry. If you need to get angry, get angry, but don't stay angry. It's like work through those emotions. Maybe you need somebody to help you with that and seek help. Maybe writing helps with that. You, you have to find what works, but maybe, you know, cleaning out a closet will help. So what if what helps is them getting in touch with you? How can they do that? Well, they can go to my website, alightpath.com, and that's A-L-I-G-H-T-P-A-T-H.com, or my email is liz at a lightpath.com. So there you have it. Thanks everybody for joining in and hope this is useful for you. Let me know. Bliss. Bye-bye.